now it's Radio Free Vestibule. Introducing the hottest, hippest, most beautiful bar in the city. The most talked about and the most exclusive bar. The lineup. I've been waiting in line for about three hours. It must be great in there. The lineup. A place so extremely hip, you have no chance of ever getting in. A bar so choosy about its clientele, only one person is allowed in per night. I've been waiting every night now for five months. I have to bribe the doorman just to get to stand in line. The lineup. The best music, the most incredible decor, the most expensive drinks, and the most beautiful person in the city. They always let the same person in every night. He must be really hip. But if that guy ever goes out of town or something, I just know they'll let me in. The lineup. So just you try and get in. The lineup. We're not even going to tell you where it is. The lineup. Jack, I gotta hand it to you. You picked a great restaurant. The food is incredible. Uh huh. Here, here, Jack. Very good choice. Very good. Choice. Yeah, it is a great restaurant. But for some reason, my apple cobbler is disgusting. I don't know what it is. It reminds me of my mother-in-law. That's <laughs> <laughs> a good one, Tommy. Very witty, Tommy. Thank you, thanks. Mother-in-law. <laughs> I, I just came up with it, you know. Uh, uh, excuse me, everybody. Uh, uh, excuse me. Hey, hey, what are you doing, Bill? Ladies and gentlemen in the restaurant, can I have your attention, please? What's going sir, on? over there, could you everybody. be quiet, please, sir? Oh, what's sir? he doing? What's could going Could you on? turn down the music, please? All right, okay. My friend Tommy has just made a wonderful joke here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh come on. It was and just he's a going to thing. do it for you now. Oh. Get up on your seat, Tommy. Oh, come on. What? Yeah. I'll get up on your seat. Come ladies on. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend Tommy Johnson. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Tommy Johnson, everybody. Okay, th thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, well, okay, uh, this is what happened here, okay? My friend Jack, that's him, he, he was eating uh, his peach cobbler, you see? Apple cobbler. Apple cobbler, yeah. sorry. <laughs> and he said, uh, it's disgusting. So I said... Reminds me of my mother-in-law. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Oh, oh, come on. No, I don't have anything prepared. Please, no. Come on. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Jack for setting me up so beautifully the way he did. He deserves a hand, at. Thank you. Uh, okay, and I'd like to thank the cook who made the apple cobbler, because without him, this would not have been possible, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, and uh, my mother and father also. Are there any questions? Yes, the gentleman in the back there. Oh, yeah, I was wondering if you always use food as a metaphor in your jokes. Uh, no, no, you see, it didn't have to be food. It could have been anything. It could have been, uh, boy, this painting is ugly. And I could have said the same thing. You see, any setup will do. It doesn't have to be food. Okay, thanks. I understand. Okay, yes, the lady in the corner there. Yeah, uh, I was wondering what the other gentleman at your table was having for dessert, um, and was that an influence uh, on your joke? He was having ice cream, and no, it wasn't. And one last question, because I gotta go, yes, the gentleman over there. I was wondering um, if you have any advice for someone who's just starting out making casual jokes. Yes, okay, be yourself, look at life in a positive way, in a fun way, and stay in school, okay? That's all the time I have. Thanks a lot, everybody. Tommy Johnson, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Tommy. Very Oh, thanks, thanks. Hey, can we have the bill over here? Thank you. Hey, it's on me, guys, all right? Oh, thank you. Nice lot. Hey, $4,695. Whoa, that's too much. <laughs> Let's see that. No, no, no. I, I was making a joke. See, I, I took out the decimal point there. See, so it's actually $4,695. 4,000, you see. <laughs> they, they can't all be gems, you know. I want your mother-in-law joke. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah that was good. Yeah. Disgusting. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, that was very good. Very good. Well, I think we should be hitting a road, eh, gentlemen? Yeah. Hey, what the road ever do to us that we should hit it? <laughs> right, guys? Mm -hmm. huh? okay. Let's go, shall we? Uh, we should hit my mother-in-law. That's what we should do. Right. My mother-in-law is like a road. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's good. yeah, let's get out of here. Okay, let's go. Sorry. Tomorrow on America Today. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow. 
a look at our past, present, and future with host Tuesday Weld. That's tomorrow on America Today. Hey, Gary, what are you doing? What? How come you're wringing out that sponge into your soup bowl? I am? Yeah, you got a sponge there and you wring it out into your soup bowl. Oh, yeah. What's wrong with me? I know. It must be Campbell's new soup in a sponge. It is? Yeah, Campbell's has got a new soup. It comes in a sponge and all you got to do is wring it out and you got a delicious soup and a super absorbent sponge. My God, that sounds disgusting. It isn't. It's made from 100% clean sponges and it comes in four delicious flavors. Tomato, consomme, and one other flavor. That's only three. They do tomato twice. How does that make any sense? I don't know, but it's from Campbell's. Oh. New from Campbell's. Soup in a sponge. Eat up a bowl, then clean up the mess. Mmm, delicious soup. And the sponge is so absorbent, it makes me sick. Helpful Handy Hints with Michael Yardley. Hi, I'm Michael Yardley, and here's some helpful handy hints. Let's start with milk cartons. Don't throw them out. You can use milk cartons. You just cut them in half, and you have a great container for nachos or caramel corn. Mmm, tasty caramel corn. Or instead of cutting them, you can draw pictures on the milk cartons and tape them to your walls. It's a nice decoration, and it doesn't cost much at all. Now, people are always asking me about leftover chicken bones. Well, here's something. Save your chicken bones, and then once you have enough, glue them together into a ball and put the ball under the coffee table. It's great, and it's easy to do, really. Here's a good one. We all have empty toothpaste tubes, right? Well, don't throw those out either. Here's what you could do with them. Get an empty margarine container, fill it up halfway with coffee grinds, then put in the empty toothpaste tube, give that to your kids, and let them make up their own games. Great for those rainy afternoons. Now, let's go to the mail. Okay, here's a great question from Mr. Malkwit of Toronto. What should I do with old sardine tins? Well, I usually do this with empty anchovy tins, but it should work with sardine tins. Get some used dental floss. Remember, we don't throw anything out. Tie the tins together with the floss and put them in an old suitcase. You put the suitcase on the couch or on your favorite chair, and then when you want to sit down, just pick up the suitcase, put it aside, and sit down. You can even write things on the suitcase like Bongiorno, or I wrote Kaleidoscope. Well, that's it for today. See you tomorrow. I'm Michael Yardley. That was Helpful Handy Hints with Michael Yardley. I'm back from the video store. All oh, right. What'd you get? Terminator 2? Uh, no, that was out. Magnum Force? Did you get Magnum Force? No. Pajama Party? Did you get that? They didn't have that. Okay, uh, did they have the Executioner? Yeah. All right. But it was out too. Uh, how about Locker Room Cheerleaders? No. Kill, Kill, Kill? Didn't have it. Uh, well, what did you get? Benji Goes Bowling. What? Benji goes bowling? Aw, oh, man, I don't want to watch that. That's only had. Aw, oh, Benji, that's awful. Jeez. Later. Fred? Yeah? This is the best movie I've ever seen in my life. Me too. We asked Mrs. Evelyn Johnson if she could write a commercial for Tide. Why, sure I could. My son, Bruno, he likes to play in the mud. And time after time, Tide gets to do it out. But, but does anyone really care? Do you care, you hot shots at the Tide Company? Do you care about me? Do you care about who I really am? Well, let me tell you something. I've got feelings. I'm a person with a soul. And I'm sick and tired of being treated like dirt. Do you hear me? Maybe I never said anything before, but I was scared. I was scared, do you understand? Scared! Thank you, I'm Evelyn Johnson, and I'm in the Actors Union Directory. Don't hesitate to call. Tide. Gets clothes clean. Hi, welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm Murray Myron. My next guest is a very funny young man. He's a newcomer to the comedy scene, so please, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm hand for Tommy Johnson. Hey, 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 thank you. Thanks a lot. 
Thanks a lot. It's great to be here in your fine city. You have a lot of great restaurants here. I was at a restaurant before the waiter gave me an apple cobbler for dessert. Let me tell you, it was disgusting. <laughs> really, it was. It was awful. I mean, if I'd wanted disgusting, I would have visited my mother-in-law. <laughs> really, eh? I mean, this happened to you. Your mother-in-law comes to visit. You open the door and it's like, Ah, honey, Frankenstein's here. Hide the kids, quick. <laughs> And they always wear that strong, stinky perfume, eh? Where do they get this stuff? I think, I think there's a place somewhere they all go to shop. The Mother-in-Law Emporium. <laughs> it's a place in Arizona. Only they know where it is. <laughs> what is a mother-in-law anyway? What is that? Funny man. Very funny man. <laughs> Disgusting mother-in-law. That's good. That's good. Okay, well, that's all the time we have tonight on uh, Let's Talk with Murray Can I come and sit Murray. down, Murray? We gotta get going now. Murray! We'll be seeing can, you tomorrow on Let's Talk. Can I with you? Bye-bye. Murray, hey, my mother-in-law is fat. My, my mother-in-law is... It's Abstract Painting with Colin Himble. Hi, I'm Colin Hemble, and welcome to Abstract Painting. Well, I'm really in the mood for painting today, and I hope you are too. You got all your paints laid out in a nice, fresh canvas? Good. Okay. Last week, I showed you how to paint anguish, pain, and existential despair. And so now we're going to go a little further and try something a bit tougher. The inner light of spirituality and man's relationship to the eternal. Okay? Don't worry. I know it sounds tricky, but you're ready. Trust me. Okay. Well, obviously, we're going to need lots of reds and yellows and warm colors. So get your rich, warm colors ready. We're going to start with this nice burnt orange. Now, what you do is make small, deliberate lines along the edge here. See? Like that. Okay, now, if you did that properly at home, you should have the symbol of man's fear of the unknown, like I have here. Careful, if your lines are too thick, you might end up with something that looks more like man's obsession with power. But with a little practice, you'll get it. Believe me. Now, here's a little trick for representing the soul. This is great. I love this. Take a Kleenex, crumple it up, and dip it in turquoise. Okay? Then with little dabs on the canvas like this, there you go. Instant soul. Great, eh? Any Kleenex will do, by the way. Now, at this point, you have to grab a tube of green number 12 and squeeze it on the canvas and then smear it around with your face jump up and run to the other side of the room and without looking at the canvas go out to a bar drink an entire bottle of scotch visit a prostitute walk for hours and hours until you find yourself by the sea just as the sun is rising and then rush home destroy the canvas we started and in a frenzy of creative passion fill a four by eight foot canvas with the images that are burning inside your mind okay and then you should end up with exactly what i've got here see great so that's it for this week i'm colin hemble Bye bye Hey, Charlie. Mm -hmm. Oh, hi, Gus. What you doing? Watching TV. Hand me the remote there. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. There's nothing on. Nah, there's nothing on. Nothing mm. on. Nah, I know this movie. You see it? Yeah, actually, there's a funny part in this, actually. Is it comedy? Oh, not really, but there's a... Different... I love funny flicks. Yeah, whatever. There's a funny part coming up. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> that was funny. What was funny? She picks up the phone. Yeah. <laughs> That's not funny. No. The funny part is coming up. It's hilarious, okay? Just watch. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> that was a shot of a building. Yeah, but it's a big building, yeah? So? It's funny? No, it's not funny. You're just laughing because I said that was a funny part. No, I find that funny. A big building there. Yeah, right. Well, don't just laugh at anything, all right? Just wait for the funny part. It's coming out. Okay, okay. There, that was it. That was it. What? That was it. That was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't laugh if you didn't find it funny. No, no, it was. It was very funny. You're right. Uh, this is great. This is a great movie. No, well, actually, it's not a great movie. It's it's pretty bad, really. That was the only good part in the whole thing. The rest is terrible. Bad acting. It's just bad. Oh, boy. Did you see that? 
That was awful. That was that was lousy. I can't believe they put this kind of garbage on TV. You you stop know? that! Don't you have a mind of your own? You're just saying that because oh, okay, no, forget it. I'm going out. I'm going out. Uh, can I come with you? Uh, no, 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 no. You stay here, all right? No, stay here. I'll come with you. No, no, no. I keep watching TV uh, here. Uh, there's, a, there's a great movie on Channel 12, actually. There is? Oh yeah, this is this is a terrific movie. It's fabulous. It's fabulous. Here, here. There we are. There you go. Watch this, okay? Okay. All right. See ya. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. Later. This is the best movie I've ever seen in my life. The place is here. The time is now. I'm home, dear. Scanners four. Everybody's head blows up. Honey, you got any aspirin? I don't feel so. Everybody's head blows up. Everybody's cranium expands at an extremely rapid rate. Everybody's head blows up. You can see little bits of brain hit the wall. Big brains. Little brains. Hamster's brains. You can see veins burst open. Bits of flesh fly across the room. Eyes pop out. Brains, brains, brains explode. It's the best movie in the universe. Everybody's head blows up till there's only one guy left. Hello! Scanners 4. Everybody's head blows up. Coming soon to theaters everywhere. Welcome back to the finals of the 31st International Dart Competition on TSM. I'm Zachary Fennell, along with Henry Timmons, and we'll bring you this coverage of these quite exciting finals here today. Next up is James McCune, trying to take the title away from champion Earl Minow. McCune, unfortunately, has not been playing as well as he normally does. It seems he's having some problems concentrating. Surprisingly, some of the other players have been having the same problem here today. McCune seems quite comfortable right now, though, doesn't he, Henry? Yeah, but it seems to come and go. I mean, look at him now. He's shaking again. I don't know what it is. Maybe just nerves. Well, let's hope he gets over this problem. He seems to be relaxing again, actually, right now. He's about to throw. Come on! Hit a bullseye! Ah, oh, he didn't even hit the board this time! Indeed, a very poor throw by McEwen, and this will cost him dearly. He must perform better than this just to stay in the competition. I think he's holding the dart wrong! McEwen's getting ready for his second throw. Here he goes. Ah! Oh my goodness, ah! the dart has landed in Henry Timmons' forehead! Timmons seems to be in a great deal of pain. McEwen is jumping up and down, even though he has definitely lost the competition. He seems very happy for some reason. Well, it's all over. I'm Zachary Fennell. For Henry Timmons, good night. Are you okay, Henry? Hospital. Here's your apple cobbler surprise, sir. Thanks. And a coffee for you. Thank you. This is disgusting. Disgusting? Yes. Reminds me of my mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> that was a scene from the comedy Mother-in-Law, starring Marlon Brando and William Shatner, a film written and directed by Tommy Johnson. John, this is Tommy Johnson's very first film, and the problem with it is that it starts off with a very funny scene. Uh, yeah, disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, the one we just saw. <laughs> mm -hmm. But then it fizzles out completely. There's nothing else to the movie. Just a bunch of bad jokes. Right. I agree, Robert. Not a good movie. So let's recap the movies we saw this week. Here's your apple cobbler surprise, sir. Two thumbs down for mother-in-law. Robert and I agreed it started off promising, but then fell flat very quickly. We disagreed, however, on The Aussie and the Wrestler with Paul Hogan and Hulk Hogan. Robert thought it was charming and witty. I hated it. I'm sick of Australian accents. They're just not funny anymore. And finally, two very enthusiastic thumbs up for Benji Goes Bowling. Both Robert and I think it's the best movie we've ever seen in our lives. Absolutely. Well, that's it for tonight. Until next week, save us plenty of popcorn. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Welcome to Obesity.
Obesity made easy. Yes, obesity is easy. Thanks to a new scientific breakthrough, you can set aside your busy schedule and be that cute, roly-poly person you always knew you could be. I gained 60 pounds in 20 days! That's right, it can work for you. And there's no exercising, no fancy gimmicks. You can eat as much as you want, when you want. It even works while you sleep. Through a scientific breakthrough, you can gain weight quickly and permanently. It's so effective, you'll see pockets of fat and flab appear before your very eyes. Look at this. I can't even fit my old pants around my ankles. Ha <laughs> ha. This plan makes obesity easier than you ever thought it could be without unsightly muscle buildup. Order now and become a new, bigger, better you. For your obesity made easy kit, just dial 1 555 7289 9446 6382 7652 6596 7109 FAT. Something wrong with Gilligan Island. 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 There's something wrong with Gilligan the skipper seems more sedate than usual. He is wearing a bright orange jumpsuit. And where are the palm trees? Mr. Howell now has the power to fly. The role of Marianne is being played by Karim Abdul-Jabbar. Ginger is 500 feet high. She is made entirely out of zinc. I don't remember her being that way in the first season. Someday. by Lawrence Stevenson, recorded by Greg DeClute and Larry Murray, produced by David Milligan. No, 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 no.